Hello again, everyone. This is Kevin. Uh, today, I'm going to give you a quick start down and dirty guide for the software Malumen. Malumen. Uh, I will do more advanced videos as time goes on and show uh, different tips and tricks and advanced workflows, multiple canvases, LED, routing, all that good stuff. But today is just the quick down and dirty. The assumption is you've been, uh, you're on show site, you've been given a Malumen machine that you need to operate, and uh, where do you go from there? So I'm using Malumen version four uh, for this uh, tutorial, uh, specifically the latest version, which just came out, I think today, if I'm not mistaken, 4.16.g, uh, but we'll check later. Um, either way, the ideas here won't change too much. So I've launched Malumen and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project. Now with most Apple based systems, we do recommend that you connect to the physical outputs first before you launch the software. Uh, but Malumen does have a really cool solution for that. Here, let me just move my camera out of the way. Um, so one cool thing with Malumen is it does allow you to pre-build your configuration before you actually have the display. Uh, but we'll talk about that in just a second. So I've gone ahead and I've launched Malumen. And if we look here, it's broken down really into three distinct sections at first. We have the canvas, the properties, and then the dashboard. Each one serves a different purpose. Uh, now that said, there are actually two quote unquote hidden menus that are really, really useful. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to expand them. So on the left-hand side, there's this arrow here. If I click the arrow, this is gonna open up my library for all of my resources. And then the lower right-hand corner, there's another arrow, which will have my countdown timer, my TRT. So in the library, we have all of our input sources. We have generic, which is browser, screen capture, slideshow. Yes, you can build a slideshow. We have uh, live inputs, uh, programs like AutoGo, which is really cool, we'll talk about in a different video. And then we have shaders, and OpenGL shaders essentially pre, uh, not pre-rendered, it's uh, generative content that is created in real time. So first question people always ask me is, how do I import content into Malumen? Once again, you're here on show site. You gotta get content into Malumen. You can do it two different ways. You go up to project, import files, and then find the files that you wish to import. Uh, we also support a drag and drop mentality. So I have a folder I've created called Malumen Content. I have images, loops, music videos, videos, and wide screens. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop these into Malumen. Cool thing is by doing it this way, it's actually gonna maintain the, fire, uh, the folder structure. Uh, we always say that for media servers, high risk switching, everything like that, uh, one of the keys to success is of course organization. So here I have my videos. Uh, I just pulled these all from YouTube, by the way. Um, widescreen, loops, and some other things. Fun. So before we dive in deeper, we're gonna now go to the output tab. So there are these hotkeys in the upper right-hand corner, optimize, output, interactions, help, and feedback. You can also access most of these with the dropdowns here at the top. So I'm gonna to go to setup output, which is the same as clicking the hotkey here. And this is gonna now show me my overall canvas. So one thing we really need to determine is what is a canvas? A canvas is an actual screen that we're gonna be outputting content to. It's a discrete quote unquote destination. We can drive more than one canvas within Malumen. However, there are pros and cons to doing it that way. So let's say you're doing two screens, house left, house right. Now, if they're gonna be showing the same content the entire time, that's basically one canvas. Um, now, if they're gonna have independent content, stage left, stage right, you can actually have them as a different canvas and control them together, but we'll talk about that. So first we have to determine what computer this is gonna be working on. What? Yes, we do support a multi-computer workflow in Malumen, especially when it comes to um, Milu node. But here we're gonna say what our layout is. Right now I'm just doing a standard one-to-one -one screen and I'm gonna say my resolution will be 1920 by 1080, just a normal UHD screen. And now here's what's cool. As I mentioned, you don't need to be connected to the output for Malumen to begin programming. So right now I have my display. If I were connected to a physical projector, LED processor, E2, X20, X80, Ascender, Equilon, I would select and find the actual output. I can, of course, do NDI and siphon as well. 
I'm not connected yet. I'm just in the pre-building phase. So I'm just going to leave it now. And then when I plug into my actual switcher and system, I could then apply the live output. So that's really cool. Uh, the more advanced things like slicing, mapping, masks, and surfaces we'll cover in a different video. Once again, today is just kind of the nitty gritty down and dirty. So I'm going to close this window by hitting OK, and I'm going to go back to my main screen. Now, a lot of people don't realize you can actually zoom in and out on this canvas. So I am using a mouse with a scroll wheel. We really recommend it. Otherwise, you can select these little tabs here in the bottom right hand corner. And this is showing my overall 1920 1080 canvas. So Malumin at the end of the day is a layer based workflow. If you want to show a piece of multimedia, it must reside within a layer. Now, one thing I really like though is it's layer based, but it's not necessarily timeline based. It can be, we'll get to that. By default is a queue based system. And we do this by assigning content to what's called a column on the dashboard. Essentially, think of each one of these as a queue. So by default, we have 14. Don't worry, we can add as many more as we want by clicking these buttons. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a video to the uh, to a column on my dashboard. So I'm gonna find one called looping logo, and I'm gonna drag and drop it onto a column. Now to play, I can hit the play button right above, and sure enough, it's gonna be playing the video content. Now, the properties tab in the upper right hand corner, let me move myself out of the way, is going to be a contextual properties tab, meaning whatever is selected is gonna have the properties for it. So we're seeing here that right now I'm not filling my screen. If I go to the content, in fact, that was looping logo. So I can see here that, um, well, the, con the content is 1280 720p, it says right here, and my screen's 1920 1080. So by default, we are not really doing scaling per se. Everything's gonna be pixel native. So I can now do this a few different ways. I can scale by hand using my mouse. I can also use the properties tab on the right hand side. So by default, everything's in percentage. Uh, I can also change the scale here from, I can do separate X and Y, and now I can scale the X and the Y to stretch. If I select the tog wheel again, I can do pixel constrain, and now it's broken down to pixels. So now I can type in 1920, 1080, position zero, zero, and I know I'm fitting, cool. Now one note about scaling here in Malumen, by default, we are uh, layer-based scaling. So now let's watch what happens if I put a different video clip. Let me find one that won't get me sued by uh, YouTube. Um, here, I'll do this one. So here's a nice, a nice little looping video here as well. How fun. Put another video in. Now, if you see here though, the sizing and positioning has maintained for each video clip. So you do have to be very careful when you're scaling up your layers. Uh, let me see if I can force this problem that I wanna show here. I'm gonna do a 4K video. This is a video from Brompton. And let's see, well, you know, it looks like we actually have fixed this in the recent update. That's cool. Well, disregard. Previously, um, the scaling would go across the entire layer. So if you made a change to one, oh, it's because I didn't pixels. That would do it. All right, cool. Well, great. That's the key, just being pixels. Now, one here's a little problem that people run into all the time, though. Uh, let me just go ahead and delete this layer. And I'm going to build a new layer. And watch what I do here now. So I'm going to scale this up in percentage, and now I'm going to do my next video and see what just happened here. This is very important to note. So what's technically happening is because this video is now set to 151% scale, the next video on the same layer is also scaled up to 151%. This is the big downfall of 
all new operators to Malumen, where they don't get the scaling as per the layer. So you have a few workarounds at this point. Number one, you can either change the scale back to pixel constraint, and then you can type in 1920 1080, and this is going to automatically force it to be that exact pixel size. The other option that a lot of people do is they actually create a second layer, one for each scaling point. So for example, let me go ahead and delete this layer. So I'm going to uh, put my first layer back in. I'm going to scale this to fit the screen. And now I'm going to create a new layer that I'm going to have my second piece of content on. And then this one can now have its own independent scaling as well. That's what some people do. As I mentioned, I prefer just to put the pixel constraints in and keep it simple. Basically, if you want everything to be 19, 20, 1080, then I could say pixel constraint, and no matter what, it's going to make it be 19, 20, 1080. Cool. So we have the video set up here in our basic columns. Sorry, I went a little long-winded rant there. I'm quite used to doing that. A question we always get to is, how do I delete just a video from a column? So you notice that when I hit the delete key, it deletes the entire layer. What you can do instead is if you click this little button here that says edit board, this is going to take you into edit mode where you can now select the video clip itself and just delete that. So once again, edit board will take you into edit mode where you can now delete just a specific clip rather than deleting the entire layer. We'll get a lot more into edit board in future videos. Once again, cannot emphasize down and dirty quick start here. So, Let's start to uh, really polish up the show a little bit. So I have a couple of videos that I'm going to do here. I'm just going to disregard the scaling for right now. Now you might say, okay, well, how do I now play to the next video? Spacebar. Spacebar is going to launch you to the next column. Spacebar. You're going to notice in the lower right-hand corner as well, here is the TRT of the video. Now you might say to yourself, self, this video is set to loop. That is, that is correct. By default in Malumen, videos are set to loop. So what you do, you go to the Properties tab on the layer, scroll down to the media, and you're going to see loop mode. You can have infinite, where it loops, play once and freeze, play once then stop, or auto follow, which means once it's done playing, it's going to now go to the next video clip. This is really great for building a queue stack. So now it's going to play here for 10 seconds, and theoretically, if I did that right, it will then go over here to column 3. two, one, and boom, great. There are uh, global options that you can set to make your videos default to this, but once again, different video. So I've built my very basic playlist here. I have spacebar jumping between them. The last thing I wanna do before we call this a day on this little basic video is I wanna create a transition between them. To do so, I'm gonna select edit board, and it now opens up this little transition tab underneath each container. So just note that each transition is per column here in the dashboard. So I'm going to select this uh, little tog wheel, and now I have the transition rate. I'm going to make it be one second. And now what's really cool is you can actually hit these little arrows and jump between each one. So now, especially if you're doing a lot of uh, columns, this is really great. Great. So now let's test it. And now it does a one second crossfade between each video clip. Super cool, super cool. So in future videos, I will show you then how to work the timeline to incorporate that for more advanced editing. We'll show you how to do interactions with controllers, MIDI controllers, companion. I will show you multiple canvases, multiple layers, layer effects, layer blend modes, um, output remapping for LED displays and all sorts of fun, crazy things. But once again, the goal of this video is you're sitting in front of a Malou machine for like a corporate event. You need to put a couple of videos in. You need to play them out with a countdown. So takeaway is once again, the countdown timer is hidden in the lower right hand corner. Let me just move. I sit still too long in these videos. So if you hit these arrows, you'll expand that. And same with the resource pool on the uh, left hand side. Hopefully you enjoyed the deep dive. Maloom is a really awesome software. I'll have a bunch of videos coming out that's going to show you all about it and all the really crazy things you can do with it. So uh, as always, stay tuned and all that good stuff.